Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest this segment is Darcy Bomford. He's the CEO of True Leaf, uh, sorry, True Leaf Medicine International Limited, trading on the Canadian Securities Exchange under the symbol MJ. Darcy, thanks for joining me again. My pleasure. Uh, Darcy, let's talk a bit about the business model. This is the first this first company I've heard of that actually makes cannabis products for pets. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We started out as an LP applicant back in 2013. Mm -hmm. And my background actually is 30 years in the pet industry. Really? Yeah, so I started a company, exited in 2012. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, I had a one-year non-compete. Okay. And uh, that was just when the MP MMPR was coming into play. And I, I saw an opportunity in the cannabis space. Mm -hmm. And uh, originally started as an applicant to produce medicinal cannabis for people and uh, secured a location. Unfortunately, we kind of missed the first tranche of approvals and we got stuck in the queue with uh, all sorts of other companies, right? right. So um, everybody knows that story. Yeah. And then uh, about a year and a half into it, we, we took the company public and then we did a, a pivot into the pet industry. My non-compete was up and it was a great fit for me. I always saw cannabis and hemp specifically as a very novel and unique ingredient in the pet industry. Mm -hmm. So uh, with a little bit of work, we put together a line of uh, hemp-based supplements for pets. Okay. Started a different division. Mm -hmm. And that's really what saved the company. You know, the, the capital markets uh, really looked at it as a great opportunity. And, and ever since, True Leaf has sort of been known as this you know, pet company in the cannabis space. The company that gets, gets your dogs high. <laughs> well, no, we don't get them high. It's no, you just don't, hemp, right. But that's the, always the question we right. get, you know, for right. sure. But so what are the conditions that pets might get for which cannabis is a, an appropriate treatment? Well, very similar to people, actually. Hmm. Right? You know, dogs are getting older and they have anxiety issues. So we have... Uh, a hip and joint formula for older dogs. Mm -hmm. And we have a calming formula for anxious dogs, which surprisingly enough is our number one seller. Hmm. I guess there's a lot of anxious dogs out there. Yeah, well the small ones I guess are more anxious with all the big ones running around. Yeah, it must be, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They're getting our feedback or something. Yeah, great, so the, uh, the company sells a line of products. Do you sell them at pet stores? We do, yeah, we're in 1800 doors worldwide. Wow. Right, so we're generating real revenue there. We, we started in the uh, U.S. in 2016. Mm -hmm. In May, we launched the product line. We also launched that year at a show in Germany. Okay. I had some contacts in Germany before, too. So we, we have a separate product line made in Germany for the European market. Mm -hmm. And in North America, they're made in the U.S. We have a distribution center in Missouri. I see. Has it been a bit of a process getting pet owners who might be sort of morally opposed to the idea of cannabis generally, and they sort of transfer that onto their pets? Yeah, definitely. You know, like you're concerned about, uh, or saying that, well, my dog get high. Well, that's always the question we get, right? So the early adopters, they realize that hemp is different and it doesn't have, uh, you know, hemp seed doesn't have CBD, it doesn't make people high. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're easy to educate, but uh, definitely the broader market, we have to teach them what hemp seed is, mm -hmm. the, some of the benefits of the ingredient and how it helps. So pets. dogs have an endocannabinoid system. They do. As well, yeah, right? exactly the same. Yeah, and the same it works, I'm, I'm imagining, as a homeostatic sort of modulator of, of health generally? It does, yeah. yeah well, it works very similarly to humans, for sure. Yeah. But you just adjust the dose based on the body weight. But our, our product actually is it's hemp seed based, right? So. The same hemp seed product you buy at a health food store, uh, protein powder or hemp seed oil, mm -hmm. that's the base ingredient that we're using for our mix, so there's no CBD in it. Hmm. Interesting. So does that mean you have superior economics when it comes to growing it in that you're not chasing the premium dried flower market for the connoisseur, you're strictly treating pets? Yeah, yeah. We're actually we're buying right from the processor in Manitoba. Mm -hmm. and we're shipping the product to the U.S and it's uh, a different price point obviously so our retail price point on our supplements are about half or or less than the cbd products but we also add other ingredients to the base formula of hemp seed to really supercharge the the functionality okay for example the hip and joint product we add curcumin right which is a very popular anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. from turmeric we also add green lip muscle which is another anti-inflammatory product for the calming, we add chamomile powder or extract, lemon balm extract, and L-theanine, mm. which is from green tea. Oh, okay. And they, together, it, you know, it's sort of like the entourage effect with hemp seed, right? We're adding other plant-based active ingredients to really supercharge the hemp. Oh, that's interesting. So is the uh, is this sort of cannabid, cannabinoid complex that pets respond to, is it, um, does, does it actually do everything that it does for humans? Like, so, for example, the... The epilepsy, mm -hmm. uh, anti-epileptic effect, 
effect of cannabinoids on humans. Is that also transferred into dogs? Yes, we have seen that. Yeah, yeah. specifically for CBD. Okay. So, so our, our company, we're we're trying to remain 100% legal on both sides of the border, right? Okay. So the hemp seed products do not have CBD, but we are doing R&D on a future CBD line. Sure. And what we're hoping is when our, our license is still in the queue, right, on the medicinal side of our company. Okay. So uh, we hope to receive our license to grow later this year, license to sell next year, and ultimately we, we want to be able to grow our own CBD and extract our own CBD for our future pet formulas, right? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, some IP there. So I see recent press release, you announced a new hemp-based cat treat at a at yeah. zoo. Um, so besides cats and dogs, what other animals do you have products for? Uh, we're working on a uh, horse, an equine line as well. Oh, really? Yeah, and the cat product was specifically in Europe. Mm -hmm. And in Europe, we actually are able to use hemp leaf. So there is some phytocannabinoids in the product there. Hmm, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. What about the uh, financial picture of the company going out 12 months? Are you a profitable company now? Will you be soon? Uh, we hope to be. We're generating, uh, I think we announced our third quarter was a million in sales. We hope to do, you know, closer to 1.4 when we... Uh, when we close this year, we haven't announced it yet, but we'll be somewhere around there. Uh, profitability on the pet divisions around three million in sales, so we hope to get there next year. Right? Oh, great! And then uh, grow that business as a separate division, and then on the medicinal side, we'll have the same sort of uh, global plant-based vision for quality of life for for people, right? So it's mm -hmm. quality of life for pets, or quality of life for people. Huh. Very cool. The um the whole industry, is there another big competitor? Like, do you have any fears of, like, Hertz suddenly coming up with a line of medical marijuana treats for dogs? Yeah, we hear rumors of other companies, you know, looking at the space. I, I think, you know, with my experience, I have 30 years in the pet industry, so I know manufacturing, marketing. We've hired uh, the best branding firm in the country to help us brand the overall company, starting with the pet division. Hmm. I think there will be some more players coming to the table. But, okay. uh, you know, it's an industry that we really know, so right. I think we have a bit of a head start there. So are these branded under the name True Leaf? In, if I was to go to my local pet value where I buy my dog food, would it, is that where I'd find it? Yeah. 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 Well, pet, uh, sorry, True Hemp is the brand. True Hemp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can buy it at uh, PetSmart has it and uh, a few stores in Ontario Global. And lots of mom and pops have it too. So what is the size of this market globally? Huge market. You know, when you recognize or when you start thinking about the pet industry and you go into a grocery store, it'll never be the same again because they have an entire aisle, sometimes two aisles, devoted to pet products, right? right, right. It's a $100 billion industry worldwide. Hmm. Uh, the pet food market in the U.S. is $30 billion, and we're targeting the, like, the supplement markets around $1.6 billion. Wow, yeah, fantastic. So. And so how do you find the reception in the investor community for, for the whole concept of a cannabis company that focuses on pet products? Very well received. You know, it's definitely a niche that, uh, that we focused on, and I think the, the capital markets recognize that. Yeah. I think there's, uh, there's obviously a lot of noise in the marketplace. There's a lot of players coming to the table. I mean, every day you hear about a new million square foot grow, right? I think what we're focused on is, a, is building a brand, okay. and doing it properly. And, um, you know, we see valuations down the road more like, you know, five to ten times sale. Mm -hmm. Hopefully there'll be a bit of a kicker because we're also in the cannabis space. Right but we're building a real business with a real revenue, running it like operators. Yeah. You know? So I think we have a great chance to create a real brand and some value here. Okay. Well, that's great, Darcy. We're going to leave it there for now. That's a great introduction. We'll come back to you in a couple of quarters and see how you're doing. Thanks for coming in today. My pleasure. Thanks, James.